Hello, and hello, thank you for joining me on my quest across Germany. I'm watching this four-part series by DW Euromax, Meet the Germans Road Trip. We're on three out of four. Eastern Germany. Ooh, East Germany. Ooh, Berlin Wall. Ooh, World War II. Um, yeah. This should be interesting. I know they have different colored light bulbs over there in East Germany. At least compared to West Germany. Um, all right, let's watch. Our Meet the Germans road trip continues, and today we're heading east. On Woo! the agenda, the city-state of Berlin and the states of Brandenburg, of Sachsen, Sachsen-Anhalt and Thüringen. All these states, although only half of Berlin, as well as Mecklenburg-Vorpommern, which we visited on the northern leg of our road trip, belonged to the German Democratic Republic from soon after the end of the Second World War all the way up until German reunification in 1990. This recent history has coloured a lot of the culture here, but there's so much more to the region than its GDR past. So today we're going to get a good dose of history for sure, but also plenty of other cultural tidbits and hopefully a few surprises too. Woo. All right. Let's start in the German capital. Wow, what a beautiful road. Cultural <laughs> tidbits and hopefully a few surprises too. I just have to say, what a beautiful road. Look how vibrantly painted those lines are. Let's start in the You're lucky to find that here in America. German capital. That side of the city once belonged to West Germany and that side to East Germany. But of course today this is one united metropolis and Germany's most populous city with a little under 4 million Is that the wall behind her? million inhabitants. Berlin has a reputation as a party hotspot and creative hub. It's extremely multicultural and is home to the political engine of the country. It claims to be the birthplace of both the currywurst and the doner kebab. And I was honestly wondering what kind of artifact that was spinning behind her. I didn't know that thing spins. I've seen pictures of politicians um, carving off a piece of the kebab. I, it's weird how it spins. What piece of meat is that? Like, what is that? And don't worry if your beer comes in one of these alarming colors. Berliner Weisse is a local wheat beer that's often drunk mit Schuss. That's with a shot of raspberry or woodruff syrup. Woodruff? Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet, but I'm for raspberry. Is this like more like the girly? I, the straw just makes me think it's, I would personally probably like, like it. I like the girly drink, so I'm not I'm not judging. I'm just saying, is this what girls drink over there in Berlin? Berlin regularly ranks as one of the least happy German states. Berliners oh. are less satisfied than other Germans when it comes to their leisure time, family life, and household income. Sorry, Berliners. The locals here also have a specific personality trait, Berliner Schnauzer, that literally means Berlin snout. Berliner Schnauzer is frei raus, so sagen, what man denkt. Ja, was soll Berliner Schnauzer? Like this. Sein, das hörst du doch. Das sind äh, Redewendungen, die ein bisschen zugespitzt sind. Eine gewisse Schnottrigkeit, Kakiness. Frechheit und Witz. Und viele, die von woanders herkommen, verstehen es eigentlich als aggressiv, was aber nicht stimmt. You'll come across plenty of different dialects in the East. Sächsisch gets a particularly bad rap in Germany. It's spoken in Sachsen and parts of Sachsen-Anhalt and Thüringen, and it's often voted the least popular dialect in the country. But <laughs> you guys vote on which dialect you like the least? <laughs> from the late Middle Ages, Saxon from the town of Meissen was considered exemplary German. Martin Luther used it for his Bible translation. And oh, Luther wow, Martin Luther. His studies in Leipzig. So let's learn a little local vocab. Nu is your. Schauen Sie mal hin, das sagen wir nie. Wir sagen, na guck mal da. Wir trinken ein Schälchen Hesen. Ein Mutschekiebchen zum Beispiel, der Marienkäfer. Bamperzunil heißt er. That's the longest name ever for a ladybug. Mutschekiebchen. Mutschekiebchen zum Beispiel, der Marienkäfer. Bamperzunil heißt er. Fantastisch. Die Entwicklung ist doch mehr zum Hochdeutsch. Und das, was übrig geblieben ist, ist weniger der Dialekt als mehr die Mundfaulheit. Alle Jugendlichen, würde ich sagen, lernen das auch größtenteils in der Schule. Es steckt doch im Blut, der Sachsen dort so zu sprechen. Ich mögen es eigentlich nicht so richtig. Das kann ich jetzt vielleicht gar nicht sagen. Jetzt senden Sie das gar nicht noch. <lacht> Man erkennt uns weltweit an diesem Dialekt. Passt so gut. Don't worry, lady. It only has 73,000 views. It's actually not as much as I thought. 
Yeah, you should be fine. Which we did buy on. Tschüssi. Tschüssi. Some characteristics of eastern Germany do have roots in the region's GDR past. For example, this is the least religious area of the country, and some parts of the east have seen strong support for anti-immigration movements and populist politics in recent years. States in the east also lag behind noticeably in terms of productivity, income... So it's the least religious, but they have... ...politics in recent years. States of the East have seen strong support for anti-immigration movements and populist politics in recent years. It's just sort of interesting because here in America, the people who are anti-immigration are also the most religious, typically, for whatever reason. States in the East also lag behind noticeably in terms of productivity, income, and employment. While West Germany ah. experienced an economic boom in the 1950s, no right. such thing occurred in the Communist East. Mm. Once the Berlin Wall fell, many young educated Easterners moved West. Rushed attempts to introduce a market economy and Western currency in the East caused unemployment to skyrocket. Over the past 30 years, various government schemes have seen billions of euros invested into regeneration projects in the so-called new German states. So do people here think the east and the west of the country are finally on equal footing? Bestimmt nicht, nee. Ich denke, in Güstow, man macht keinen Unterschied mehr. Wir werden von den Westdeutschen oft als die zweite Wahl Deutschlands bezeichnet. Oh, really? So there's, oh wow, interesting. There's like that kind of um, stereotyping and prejudice type of thing going on with the westerners versus the easterners it seems like there's got to be still some major differences especially economically because it really hasn't been that long Nice girl. We're going to talk history. Let's do it properly. After World War I, Germany's constitutional monarchy was replaced by a parliamentary democracy. The assembly that created the new constitution met in this theatre here in Weimar, so the city got a name check and the period became known as the Weimar Republic. The new system had its strengths and weaknesses, but certainly the Golden Twenties were seen as a time of cultural and artistic progress. The Republic faltered during the Great Depression and fell completely with the rise of Hitler and the Nazi regime. But Weimar has another claim to fame. It's the home of Bauhaus. In 1919, Walter Gropius founded the Bauhaus art and design movement here in Weimar. This new approach sought to unite function with beauty, fine art with design and industry. There was a focus on crafts like metalwork, cabinet making and weaving to create pieces in the Bauhaus aesthetic. Functional, abstract, austere and fit for mass production. Bauhaus inspired buildings can still be found all over Germany and indeed across the world. In fact, architecture nerds will have a field day in Eastern Germany. From distinctive GDR era buildings to the UNESCO listed medieval houses of Quedlinburg or this colourful Hundertwasser creation in Magdeburg. Brandenburg has some of Germany's most striking palaces, including Sans Souci here in Potsdam. Wow, look at that thing. I mean, it's not the tallest palace, but it's beautiful. The favourite residence of Frederick the Great. Damn. If Baroque is more your thing, you cannot miss the city of Dresden, whose architectural beauty has earned it the nickname Florence on the Elbe. Much of the city was reduced to rubble under heavy bombing during World War II. The iconic Frauenkirche lay in a state of ruin for nearly 50 years before wow. a huge reconstruction effort finally began in the 1990s and was completed in 2005. The East That's really not bad, what, like 10 years? Some part of Germany also has And it looks like this? So much culture to offer. From opera to Ostrock, classical to contemporary, graffiti to Gurleywood. That's the nickname of the small eastern town of Gurlitz because of its frequent film cameos. Oh, neat. There are four officially recognized ethnic minorities in Germany. The Frisians, the Danes, the German Sinti and Roma, and the Sorbs, a Slavic minority that settled in and around the Lausitz region well over a thousand years ago. Repeated attempts to Germanize the Sorbian people reached ahead under the Nazis, who destroyed Sorbian literature, banned their organizations, and persecuted their people. And yet the Sorbian languages and customs are still going strong today. Some 60,000 Damn. They survived it. Currently live in Saxony and Brandenburg. 
That's crazy. You don't hear about the sorbs here in America. Never heard about that. Serbske Menschen du Verbojice. Sorbisch ist ja nicht nur die Sprache, ist wirklich meine Identität. Dazu gehört auch die Kultur, die sorbische Tracht. Wir haben eigene Hymnen, eine eigene Flagge, eine eigene Sorbische. Yeah, I guess kind of ironically trying to get rid of them. Probably drove them closer together and when they survived, they came out probably even, you know, more strongly together. Sorbische Fußballnationalmannschaft zum Beispiel, das macht mich unglaublich stolz. Unsere Community sehr konservativ, sehr traditionell, hängt auch sehr damit zusammen, dass wir sehr eng kirchlich verbunden sind, weil man auch äh, unter der deutschen Repression dort nur die Sprache sprechen und leben konnte, singen konnte und anwenden konnte. Also meine Lieblingstradition ist als sorbischer Katholik natürlich das Osterreiten, wo man am Ostersonntag auf dem Pferd sitzend der Nachbargemeinde die frohe Auferstehung Jesu Christi cool. verkündet. Wir sind hier in Brandenburg und in Sachsen sozusagen, legen wir über die Landesgrenze. Und in beiden Bundesländern gibt es das Sorbengesetz, das nach der Wende eingeführt wurde und wo uns Sorben natürlich mehrere Rechte oh, wow. zugesprochen werden. Unter anderem, dass wir die Nationalität auf Sorbisch ändern können, dass wir das Recht haben, unsere Muttersprache zu pflegen. Wir haben das Recht auf öffentliche zweisprachige Beschilderung, was uns ganz wichtig ist. Wir fordern diese Rechte immer wieder ein und müssen auch manchmal darum kämpfen. Ja. So, jetzt wird's gegessen. Ja, im besten sorbischen Restaurant, ja genau. Das typischste Gericht wäre die sorbische Hochzeitsuppe. Das ist so eine klare Rinderbrühe. Only thing I'm lost on is exactly what it means to be Sorbian. Like, how did they become Sorbian? Dazu dann sozusagen sorbisches Hochzeitsessen mit Meerrettichsoße und Rinderfilet. Grüße. Trommel Jack. Das gibt's auch jeder sorbischen Hochzeit. Also keine sorbische Hochzeit ohne dieses sorbische Essen. Tofu. Time to find out what's cooking in the rest of Eastern Germany. There's plenty this of place. culinary influence from neighboring Poland and the Czech Republic. Mm. Oh, and Stollen from Dresden is a festive favorite. Thüringer Rostbratwurst is a classic sausage speciality. I'm, I was just curious Dresden what is a festive favorite. What condiment is on there? It's like a squeeze of icing on top of this. Rostbrat. The bread looks really good. All the all the bread in Germany looks really good. Wurst is a classic sausage speciality. And a popular sweet treat in the Harz region is the Baumkuchen or tree cake, named for its many rings. Oh. The highest peak in the Harz Mountains is the Brocken, which is shrouded in myths about witches and devils. <laughs> it also doubles as an excellent hiking spot. Looking for more natural beauty spots in wow. Eastern Germany? Try the Erzgebirge, Sächsische Schweiz National Park, Park oh. or the sprawling Spreewald. Brandenburg takes the title of most watery German state with some 3,000 lakes. How is it the most watery state if up top it's a bunch of islands and oceans? Let's hit the Zemptenberger See. You might get more than you bargain for if you stop off at a lakeside bathing spot here. Freikörperkultur, free body culture is very popular oh, wow. around here. That brings us to the end of another world... <laughs> wind trip i hope you discovered something new along the way and as ever so you never know what you're gonna see out there on the on the lakes share your own tips and experiences in the comments make sure to join me for the final leg of the meet the germans road trip cheers oh i will be tomorrow and i can't wait western germany <sighs> well that was a that was a really great video what can i say I don't know. There was a lot of super interesting information in that video, and I just kind of enjoyed it all. And um, there's definitely a lot more to Eastern Germany than just its history as a communist uh, state. And it's crazy. How I mean, I guess it's it's still not what equal to Western Germany in every way. But it's amazing how beautiful it is and how, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Okay, I'm going to stop this video because I don't even know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. That's if, if When you hear me say, you know what I'm saying, usually I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh...